Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bito. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 132 of Mexico Unexplained, where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Pitto. In the mid-1930s, two experienced American hunters, Dale and Clell Lee, began a small hunting guide operation in the wild Sierra Madre of the Mexican state of Sonora. The Lee brothers had quite a profitable business taking other visiting hunters, mostly other fellow Americans, on hunting excursions in the northwestern Mexican wilderness. For a special client, Indiana banker Joseph Shirk, the Lees relocated their operations temporarily to the south in 1938, to the mountains of the state of Sinaloa, Shirk wanted to hunt jaguars, and La Silla Mountain, which was rich in all sorts of wildlife, was their destination. On this week-long trip, the three hunters eventually treed and shot a very large cat, which was neither a jaguar or a cougar, the two types of large felines native to Mexico. This cat was much larger than a jaguar or cougar, and its ears, legs, and body were longer than either type of traditional Mexican wildcat. The Lees had heard rumors of an altogether different feline Mexican predator called an onza, and were convinced that this example belonged to that class of creatures only previously described in legends and vague historical accounts. The hunters measured and photographed the great cat and then butchered it. Joseph Shirk took the skin and the skull of the animal back home to Indiana with him. The Lees shared their experience with zoologists and the American press, but were not taken seriously by either. After their bad experiences, they only shared their story reluctantly some 20 years after the event and this time with Arizona author Robert Marshall. After interviewing the Lees, Marshall went down to Sinaloa in search of the legendary cat and published a book in 1961 titled simply The Onza. Pre-Hispanic Aztec accounts record a third large cat on the western fringes of the empire called the Quitlamitzli. The great personal zoo of Emperor Montezuma in the heart of the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan had a few specimens of Quilamitzli in its collection of animals. Bernal Diaz del Castillo, part of the initial party of Spanish conquistadors who entered the Aztec capital as invited guests, described three different types of large cats in the great zoo. Diaz writes about a part of the zoo where the emperor housed what he called the, quote, carnivorous beasts of prey, end quote, and among these animals existed, quote, tigers and two kinds of lions, end quote. The early Spanish explorers tended to use Spanish words to describe new animals discovered in their conquered territories, thus causing some confusion among people reading their accounts many years later. The tigers, according to Diaz, meant our understanding of jaguars. The two kinds of lions phrase is a bit of a mystery. As already mentioned, besides the jaguar, in Mexico there is only one type of other large cat known by three different names, the cougar, puma, or mountain lion. What was the second type of lion? Was it the Quitlamitzli, or what was later called the onza? In some research about Bernal Diaz's account of the Aztec Zoo, some writers allege that Diaz describes the second line as being, quote, something like a wolf, end quote. Looking at the original writings of the Spanish chronicler, this is not the case. Diaz quickly moves on from his, quote, two types of lions, end quote, to describe, quote, animals, something like wolves and foxes and other smaller carnivorous animals, end quote. He was most likely describing coyotes. 
His misattributed wolf references have nothing to do with the legendary Onsa. In fact, other than mentioning two types of lions, he offers no specific details at all. More than two centuries after Bernal Diaz, the Jesuits of the western fringes of colonial New Spain described the Onsa. In his two-volume treatise, Sonora, a description of the province, German-born Father Ignaz Pfefferkorn wrote with great respect of this gigantic cat, quote, It is not as timid as the cougar, and he who ventures to attack it must be well on his guard, end quote. Another Jesuit priest, Father Johann Jacob Beger, wrote in a letter to his family in France that, quote, An onsa dared to invade my neighbor's mission when I was visiting and attacked a 14-year-old boy in broad daylight. A few years ago, another killed the strongest and most respected soldier in the area, end quote. The authorities in Rome posted Baiger to the remote mission of San Luis Gonzaga in the mountains of the southern Baja Peninsula. This gives modern-day researchers a rough idea of the supposed range of the Onsa, the mountains of Sonora and Sinaloa all the way across the Sea of Cortez to the wild and inaccessible areas of Baja. Stories of the Mexican Onsa trickled out of the Great Cat's territories over the ensuing centuries, and besides the story of the Lee brothers in the late 1930s, there have been a few other reports of this creature to gain the attention of the outside world. In 1926, cowboy C.B. Ruggles supposedly shot an Onsa near the Yaqui River in the state of Sonora. Ruggles took photos of the creature and wrote about its sleek body and the cat's thin, spotted legs, often reported by other eyewitnesses. Sometime before 1930, American naturalist Frank Doby reported shooting an onsa that was caught in a trap. He skinned the cat, but the pelt did not survive a bug infestation and disintegrated before he could get it to the United States for further examination. These few reports that did make it out of Mexico attracted derision from scientists who often claimed that people citing the mythical cat were misidentifying the common cougar. With a curious encounter in January of 1986, the Onsa only really began to pique the interests of cryptozoologists or those who seek to discover, describe, and study legendary creatures. Mexican rancher Andres Rodriguez Murillo shot an enormous cat on his Sinaloa ranch. The rancher fired on the creature as it was about to attack him. Rodriguez later gave a detailed description of what he shot. It was not a cougar or a jaguar, but much larger and with a slender body and long legs like an African cheetah. It also had large ears and dark markings on its legs. The rancher showed the carcass to his neighbor, an experienced hunter named Manuel Vega. Vega told Rodriguez that his father had killed a similar animal in the 1970s, and he still had the animal's skull. To Manuel Vega, there was no doubt. They had before them the legendary Onsa. The two decided to preserve the specimen by freezing it and contacted a cryptozoologist. They reached out to J. Richard Greenwell, at that time the Secretary of the International Society of Cryptozoology, or ISC. Greenwell had a particular interest in the Onsa, and had already managed to track down and examine two alleged Onsa skulls. After sufficient back and forth, the Rodriguez specimen made it to the Regional Diagnostic Laboratory of Animal Pathology, belonging to Mexico's Ministry of Agriculture located in Mazatlan, Sinaloa. Under the direction of American cougar researcher Dr. Troy Best, a Mexican team carefully dissected the gigantic cat and subjected it to intense scientific scrutiny. Richard Greenwell assisted. In his lab notes, Greenwell wrote, quote, Upon inspection, the cat, a female, appeared to be as described by the native people. It had a remarkable, gracile body with long, slender legs and a long tail. The ears also seemed very long for a puma, about 100 millimeters. 
and small horizontal stripes were found on the inside of its forelimbs, which as far as has been determined to date are not found on pumas. Well-developed mammae were observed, and its age was determined to be at least four years. It weighed about 27 kilograms. In life prior to freezing, it probably weighed a little more, compared to a range of from 36 to 60 kilograms in adult female pumas. Its total length at 186 centimeters fell within the normal range of female pumas from 150 to 233 centimeters. The tail, however, was 73 centimeters in length, very long for a female puma of comparable size. The range in female pumas is from 53 centimeters to 81 centimeters, end quote. The team examining the specimen sent blood and tissue samples to the United States for further analysis. Texas Tech University declared that the Rodriguez specimen had great similarity and no significant differences with a standard cougar. As animals of different species are often close genetically, the Texas Tech preliminary investigation was inconclusive. Greenwell and Best did not follow up with any scientific publications regarding the supposed onsa. The vague outcomes from the investigation led researchers to four possible conclusions regarding this mythical beast. Number one, this could truly be a previously unknown species, perhaps a surviving example of the prehistoric Truman's cheetah, a North American variety of the African cheetah that died out 11,000 years ago. Number two, this could be a naturally occurring hybrid of a cougar and a jaguar. Number three, the Rodriguez specimen and others could be mutant forms of a common cougar. Number four, this could be a geographically specific subspecies of a cougar unique to northwestern Mexico. In 1998, more detailed results on the Rodriguez onza were released. Comparative protein and mitochondrial DNA analyses revealed no significant differences between the supposed onza and the North American cougar. Given the many sightings and killings, this was the only specimen that underwent rigorous scientific analysis. Therefore, the researcher must use caution to apply the findings of the Rodriguez case to other reports of the mythical, majestic, gigantic cat of Mexico. Perhaps sometime in the near future, a rancher or cryptozoologist on the hunt for the onza may show the world a living, breathing creature to put the mystery to rest once and for all. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the book, Mexico Unexplained, to get a hard copy of The Magic, The Mysteries, and The Miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, thank you and gracias. Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at mexicounexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.